topic is forgiveness or unforgiveness. People think that forgiveness is a one-time thing. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> that scripture where the disciple asked Christ, well, how many times do I have to forget? Thinking that, you know, there's a magic number. Once I reach that number, then I don't have to forgive anymore. And I think that that's a fallacy. Forgiveness is a daily walk. Because let me tell you something. When you walk out the door of your house, somebody can offend you. Literally walking out the door of your house. Yes. So it's a daily walk. So what are some of the areas that you would say people in your experience that people struggle in forgiveness? I, um, one big area is relationships. You know, um, yeah. people get yeah. hurt. People get hurt. And I mean, life is about relationships. And I think when people get hurt and they harbor resentment mm-hmm. towards someone because someone said something about them or are just outrightly someone if they were, if they were together they got cheated on or whatever the case may be someone in your family member i think a lot of people harbor that you know resentment you know personally you know i and i always say like you know growing up i was molested so i was molested as a kid and i know that i harbored a lot of like unforgiveness um mm-hmm. from my past and yeah. holding on to it and it like kind of fueled um, a lot of the decisions that I made, you know, going further because of being so hurt. So I think that's the core. When I think about um, people not forgiving or being hurt, it, it really comes down to relationships with someone has done to them that they can't get over. They can't get over it. And I think the reason why, Chris, that a lot of people struggle with getting over it is because they can't, they can't come to terms with what was lost. So like, when somebody does something to you, like in your case, they molested you, mm. they took from you. They had no right to take. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of times people wrestle with, well, what what, what would my life would have been like had this not happened to me? What did I lose? What did I miss out on? And so you keep rehashing that over and over and over. You keep replaying it like a broken record. Like, where would my life been if this hadn't happened to me or what could I have done if this hadn't happened to me and what did this person take from me and I think that that keeps us stuck in one place because forgiveness is a process I think that admitting the pain is the first step but getting if you don't move past that you get stuck don't you absolutely you definitely get stuck and and uh, I it's something I it's and it's crazy, like how we think. Like I have a like a saying: that unforgiveness is like drinking a poison, but expecting someone else to die, you know. Yep. And it's like you harbor all this stuff, and you think you're actually like you're you're doing something that's been like like it's just a weird dynamic when forgiveness is really for you, and holding <laughs> on to it only fuels the other person's power in the situation. And you give that person Absolutely. more power than what they should have. So Absolutely. when you harbor it and you hold on to it, it, it just affects you, you know? Yeah, and you you stay a victim. You stay yes. a victim. You never break out of that victim cycle. And so then you start to justify your behavior because of your pain. Your pain becomes, instead of having power to forgive, you get stuck in your pain to, to feel sorry for yourself and self-pity and you begin to justify your dysfunction and your behavior instead of saying, okay, this happened to me. I want to get past it, but how do I move past it? You know, um, in the Bible, Christ, when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yes. That's deep. Yeah. That, really think about that. He's on the cross for no reason, you know, no earthly reason. He had a heavenly assignment, mm-hmm. but he didn't do anything wrong. He, it wasn't justified, okay? And so here he is on the cross saying, not thinking about himself or his pain, but thinking about the people that are that the enemy is using to victimize him. So that's somebody who went from being a victim to being a victor. Yes. And so gets stuck in unforgiveness. But when you keep rehashing things over and over again, you, you stay the victim. You you never you never get out of that. Yeah, and that victim mentality. When you say that, like, um, that's that's what fueled my that's what fueled my addiction when I was uh, struggling with uh, the mm-hmm. things I was struggling with. It was the victim mentality. I always had a mindset of, you know, this is you know this, you know people like you always do this stuff to me, whatever. And I had all this stuff that I just harbored 
you know, one of the things that I always, like, I struggle with for the longest time is, like, going back to being molested is the fact that, you know, um, my grandmother, who really knew about the situation, and uh, she said she was going to take care of it and whatever, but it kind of was swept under the rug. Um, I, I, I took that, and I applied that to everyone in my life when if they said they were going to do something, I would, I would, it would take me back to, you know, if you say you're going to do something, do it, you know, and then if it didn't happen, it kind of became me controlling the narrative in my relationships and trying to uh, navigate what uh, someone is supposed to be towards me, you know, yeah. um, and it, it, it was very toxic. And uh, I found myself like subconsciously being controlling as a defense mechanism not as a malicious thing, but yeah. but of being having a victim mindset to say I don't mm -hmm. want no one to hurt me, so I need I need to control the narrative and and it is ultimately destroyed relationships in my life. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds like to me you, that initial experience created created a wrong foundation in you, and yeah. it clogged you to the filter of your heart, and so. Everything that you experience, you filter through that pain. Yes, and it's almost like looking. You know how you you go to the circus and you're in the in that room with all the crazy mirrors and and your body's all distorted. You know you don't really look like that, but because the mirror is distorted, the yeah. image that reflects you is incorrect. And so the heart, your, the mirror of your heart was distorted because of your pain. Yes, and so you saw through that mirror was distorted it, it maybe it was or wasn't it didn't matter but to your perception it was always and so you push people i would imagine you probably pushed okay the yes. right people probably drew to yourself the wrong people yeah so yeah yeah it's a cycle yeah you're so right about that i pushed everyone who really cared about me away and the people who uh th that didn't have my best interest in mind you know, yeah, and it just made um, just a bigger issue, you know, because those people who really didn't care about me would wind up hurting me, and it just fueled the, vi the being the victim. And, uh, yeah, you're so true, so true. So when did you, you know, talking about forgiveness, when did you break free of that? Because it is a cycle. It becomes a vicious cycle. When did you finally break free? When I was in Teen Challenge, sharing your testimony with other people and your and you're constantly uh, telling people your life. And over time, mm -hmm. as me sharing, I became more comfortable with sharing and started really getting comfortable with, you know, the fact of being molested and really, really digging deep into, okay, well, why is that? You know, and I had to relive the moments and all that stuff. And I mm -hmm. really started, and I really started to understand what I was starting to do. It was really up until um i would say from there it's just it's been a process since i i was break, broken free to be able to talk about it a couple right. of years ago but now over time in these past couple like this past year or so the the stuff that's been hidden in the surface has been bubbling up and that's when the controlling the narrative and uh as a defense mechanism is coming up so i broke free but now like the little the 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 little root things those little things that's been there God has been like bringing up yes. so yeah so you break you break free, you get broke free but there's some still residue that's left over too absolutely I th it's a process right it's yeah. a process one of the things that jumped out at me when you were talking was the key word understanding and yeah. I think when you can understand the bigger picture and you can trust God with that final result. It makes it easier to let stuff go because the word forgiveness actually means to forgive. It means yeah. to release from a debt. So sometimes it's something that they really do owe you. They really did wrong you, you know, yeah. or maybe it's your perception of a wrong, but either way, it's you being able to release that person from the, the need to pay you back or to, to restore you to some degree. And so when you can understand the bigger picture, it helps you to, to kind of let stuff go a little bit easier. Like the more you talked about what happened to you, the more the Lord allowed you to gain understanding. And then you were like, okay, all right, I can let that go. I'm ready. I'm ready to let that go now. 
because I understand God's process in all of this. Yes, absolutely. To clearly communicate your pain to the person, you know, sometimes someone doesn't even know that they're, that they hurt you and we're yeah. hurt and we're sitting there holding on to it and, <laughs> and, uh-huh. to commu- and to communicate to the person, listen, this is the situation. Like I always say, resolve the conflict or whatever. Go and talk to the person. Let that person know. It gives them insight on, okay, how not to treat someone else if that's the case or what not to say. So communication is key. Um, uh-huh. And clearly communicate your issue. You know, um, I, I say it all the time. Like, listen, if I got a problem with you now, you're going to know about it. I'm coming to yeah. you. you know, I'm coming right to you. I'm going to call you. You know, and, or with something, we need to sit down and talk. Don't run away from it. Um, Absolutely. Get to the bottom of it. Because sometimes it's even either assumption. We get hurt based off of assuming things. Exactly. And sometimes just have a conversation and clear it up very quickly. Yeah. And it happened to me this week. I, someone asked me to do something. And I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I'll do it for you, whatever. And then they sent me a text message to thank me. But somehow or another, a previous text message that they sent me came came through first. I was responding to a previous message. So in that, my response looked as if I didn't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. So immediately, the person called me. They were like, listen, I'm a little confused because you said you wanted to do it, and now you're saying you don't. And I'm like, I'm so glad you called me. Let yeah. me explain. But just something that little, if she wasn't sure, yeah. right? She was still dealing with some unresolved pain, right? Yeah. She could have been like, see, everybody lets me down. Everyone that I, I go to for help lets me down. And here I am. Yeah. Not even, what happened, right? <laughs> yeah. An example of how just sometimes just going to a person and talking to them and just saying, you know what? And not and, and not going with an attack spirit, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> in humility and saying, you know what? And and I always say, I always do this. I always put it on me. So I don't go to them and say, you said this and it hurt me. I go to them and I say, you know, the other day you said something and this is how I heard it. Mm-hmm. That's how I started off. Because the, if you go in the accusational spirit, then they're going to put a wall up. And once yeah. that wall, now you're talking at each other. And yeah. nobody, I'm trying to make my point you're trying to make your point and nobody's making a point. Yeah. So I always say to them, you know, you said this, but this is how I heard it. And it, maybe mm. it's me. This yeah. is how I heard it. And, you, and I find that when I come from that angle, the person more than likely is like, okay, wait a minute, what? I think we, can, we can have a real conversation. Yeah, it, 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 that's it's so true. It's so key. And, and I think we all go through it. I mean, I don't know how many times you know, and I always say that, and I tell people all the time, like, you know, especially with text messaging, like, you used to talk with a message. Oh, yeah. man, so many times things get so so in, misinterpreted, and you you have a perception on something you're saying, and the person is taking it one way. And, yeah, and, man, it's, it's so, it's so vital to communicate, you know what I mean? And you can cover so much ground just by calling okay. the person up or whatever. And you can get through, you can get the tone of voice and all that. But yeah, stop the assuming because assuming gets you in trouble. The forgiveness is a process. So Mm. it's like the layers of an onion. It's just like when you're going through that process of dealing with internal wounds and when things trigger you, that's another layer being peeled back. It doesn't feel good in the moment. It's uncomfortable. But God is saying, okay, I need you to recognize what just happened here. And then I need you to submit to me so I can walk you through the process so that you can become whole. You know, and another thing, um, when you're hurt, don't talk negative when you're hurt about people because it, it's, it's, it will affect you. It is so, so true. And, and, and you get to a point where you, you, you start to cross a line. Because one of the things you have to remember is that when somebody hurts you, the word of God is the word of God, okay? It doesn't mm-hmm. change for it is established. It is the word of God. Um, so when we're in a situation and somebody hurts us or someone is doing us wrong perpetually, or especially if it's, the, it's like an over and over again kind of thing, the Lord is doing a work in us. 
And so the way we respond or the way we act or how we display ourselves are seeds that we're sowing that we're going to reap later. Because the scripture says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, mm -hmm. he reaps. It well, he only reaps it when people don't do him wrong. Or only, there, there are no ifs. It's whatever you sow, you reap. So even when you're in your pain, you've got to somehow be spiritually. And this takes spiritual maturity, too. I mean, we don't get here overnight. But you have to be aware that your response, your reaction, how you display yourself, they're all seeds towards your future. And so even if someone did you wrong, and you want to point out that wrong, if you do it in the wrong spirit, that's a seed that you just put in the ground for your harvest. Yeah. And so to that process of forgiving, God is doing the work in you because you got you to gotta zip that lip. <laughs> and that, yeah. That's tough, especially yeah. you know the person is out of order or you know you have a right to be angry. You know that your feelings are justified. But, and you want to respond in your flesh, you got to zip that lip because the words that you speak, they don't evaporate or disintegrate. They go out there and yeah. they produce after their own kind. Yeah. So if you're being negative, if you're speaking in anger, if you're speaking in bitterness, if you're spreading rumors because you just want people to know the truth, yeah. all, all of that goes back on you. Yeah. All of that goes back on you. I have found that for me personally, when I'm in a season where I'm really being battered, I mean like battered, uh, whether by a person or whatever, I get very quiet. I learn to quiet myself because I've learned that Lori says nothing good when she's like that. Mm. So nothing good comes out of my mouth when I'm when I'm feeling like that in my flesh. So I've learned to just sit myself and just get quiet. And even people will come to me and say, well, what do you think? I don't have a thought. You don't have an opinion? No. Nope. Mm. nothing to share because I, I understand that whatever I sow in this season is going to reap a harvest next I mean I mean you listen you when you're talking I, every time you talk I, I'm like I get I get blown I get so so profound what you're saying right now <laughs> and it's and, it, and it's so true it's so true Lori like uh it, it's 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 so vital you know, it's so vital. All this stuff, like the under, the understanding to know, just to know who you are at the same time, to know how you're going to respond and how people are. Um, uh, everyone's geared differently. Everyone has a different, a different approach towards things. And we have to understand. And the hardest thing, the yes. hardest thing to do, especially through all this being hurt and harboring unforgiveness, and everyone yeah. says it, you know, you got to pray for the people who hurt you, <laughs> which is the hardest thing to do. And you can't, yeah. don't, and don't pray God curse them. You have to pray <laughs> for God, you know, you have, you have to pray for God to bless them, you know? And, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, you have to really pray. And it's, it's something that a lot of people say, well, pray for the person. And it's like, it's kind of just like some stuff that people throw up, but it's so important. Because we have yeah. a biblical principle to pray for our enemies, those who persecute us, you know. And it's it is, and it, it's such a life lesson, you know. When you pray for the person, and you might pray for the person, and you might not really feel like it. You might be like, you know what? I don't want to pray. I don't feel like yeah. praying. But over time, <laughs> as you, if you continue to pray, and it, this mm -hmm. is this is this happened to me. When I was at Teen Challenge. I was harboring something with this with this staff member for the longest time and it, and i harbored it so much that i wound up trying to take you know matters into my own hands and i wound up getting disciplined for it and and god sat me down for a period of time i had to learn to pray for this guy and uh -huh. learn forgiveness and what happened was i didn't when i prayed at, at first i didn't really want to but <laughs> but what started to happen is when i what i some prayers I did mean, and then the, and then as time was going on, I genuinely was praying for the person, and then I started to see the person differently. Those scales were taken off my eyes, you know, and yeah. God, and God allowed me to start seeing him the way he sees him, 
You know, yeah, yeah. so so important to keep praying. Just keep praying. Keep keep praying. Yeah. Oh, Chris, that is so powerful. And I don't think people realize that our healing is connected to our ability to pray for that person. Key to being able to really pray for your enemies and mean it is if you allow God to break your heart for what breaks his. And so when you say, God, I want you, like you said, I want to see them how you see them. Mm. When, when it happens, praying for them is very easy because now you're not thinking about your pain. Yeah. You're not thinking about what did to you. You're thinking about the fact that this is a person. This is a life. This is a human soul. This is someone that God died to die for I have to pray for this person and I noticed that as I began to do that Chris my heart was healed mm. I, the bitterness I was feeling was just lifting up our healing is connected to our our ability to obey God and one of the things that God has called us to do is to pray for those who bless those who despitefully use us now listen we don't we're not a doormat let's get it okay, to the Lord yeah. The Lord talks about taking the peace with us. If we go somewhere and we're not received to take our peace with us. So we're not a doormat. But if we find ourselves in a situation where we've been hurt, here are the keys to your healing. The key to your healing is to obey God. The key to your healing mm -hmm. is to them. The key to your healing is to pray for them. Well, how do I do that? I hurt I'm hurting. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. Do that when God breaks your heart. Yeah. Heart. Then praying for that person is very easy. Yeah, the breaking of your heart, you know, and, and allow God to do the work. It's because it's God who's doing the work. He's doing the work. You have to allow him. And so, and you said it. We get in the way. We get in the yeah. way of our healing. You know, yeah. our stubbornness, our pride, all that stuff gets in the way of what God is asking us to do. Like, he, it's like we have this great big life, this test of life that we walk through. And God has given us a book with all the answers to the test. You exactly. know, it's an open book test, you know, throughout life. And if we just follow his principles, you know, he's not, it's not going to, I mean, especially with forgiveness, he doesn't give you a model for forgiveness to make it worse. And he knows, <laughs> he knows what's best. And if we just follow his, the kingdom principles, man. It, it, it's 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 like it's it's so simple it's so simple it's hard it, you know <laughs> that's so true because <laughs> the spirit but it's your flesh because your flesh yeah. is like no we're not yes. gonna do this. and the spirit man is like no you are going to do this today and you know i i thought as you were talking i thought about you know, how the Lord has given us his word and that's his primary way of communicating to us and talking to us. And I think it's in the seasons when we're not going through anything, that's when we need to get that word in us really solid because when we hit stuff, we need to be able to pull like a reservoir. We need to be able to pull it up quickly to apply it to whatever situation that we're in. Um, but one point I wanted to make too, Chris, and maybe you can even expound on it. We can forgive a person without being reconciled to them. Yeah, I, yep, yeah. I up because I don't want people to think that the relationship is going to go back to the way it was before. It might, it might, but that that's for God to determine, okay? And, and because trust has been broken, credibility has been lost. There is a difference between forgiving and reconciliation. Sometimes you have to have forgiveness to have reconciliation, mm -hmm. but you necessarily have to have reconciliation because you've forgiven someone so i wanted to bring that yeah that and you're 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 so true about that i actually i have that because I, I have my my note i have some notes here and that's one of the and that's at one of the top of them right there is the a lot of people don't want to forgive because they feel if i forgive that we have to reconcile so that's what actually holds you back it's about you being free it can bring reconciliation over time, but yeah. you don't have that mindset to be like, oh, if I forgive, that means we got to be cool again or whatever. No, no, no. It, that doesn't ha don't you got to get out of that mindset. And a lot that's that's what hold, I really believe. I truly believe that's what holds a lot of people back. You may have changed, but the person may not have. They yeah. might still be the person that they were that hurt you. 
So why it would be a fool to go back into it. It's like burning my hand on the stove and then going back and putting my hand back on the fire because I'm healed. That's mm -hmm. that's if you think about it in the natural, that makes no sense. So we have to be careful that you know we're we're forgiving them, we're receiving our healing, but we also have to be discerning because if the if the situation hasn't changed or if the person hasn't changed, then we are not obligated to put ourselves back into that situation again. And so we have to use wisdom and discernment and knowing. And then sometimes God is done with that season of your life. Yeah. And so he, he walks you through the forgiveness process, but he also is telling you, I want you to forgive them so that I, I can move you to what's next. Yeah. It be that. It's going to be something else. But you won't be able to fully embrace what's coming next yeah. if, you don't if you don't release and forgive them. But so reconciliation... Um, it's not always the case, and we have to be okay with that. Yeah. We have to be okay. like for me, I struggled with. I grew up with the kind of sense of personality where I like to make everything right. That that was just how I was, mm -hmm. and so I struggled with that, and I ended up getting hurt over and over again because I would forgive the person, and then I would be like, okay, we can go back to the way it was, and then I would get hurt again, and then it finally occurred to me, like, wait a minute, Lori, you've changed, but they haven't. Mm. So if helping them is hurting you, Lori, and you can't help them anymore, you have to turn them over to God. Yeah, so, turn turn them over. Turn them over yeah. to the Lord. You know, yeah. turn you got to turn them over. I'm going to turn you in. That's what I tell them. I'm about to turn you in. I'm about to turn you in to, uh, to the Lord. It's so true. Don't harbor. Don't hold on. Don't speak negative. Trust God to deal with the process. You know, he mm -hmm. says it. He says, vengeance is mine. He repays. You know? That's enough. And yeah, then, yeah. and then when he repays, it's just crazy. He repays, he'll repay, and then when he does, when he does repay, we are called not to rejoice in it. They have to be. We can't rejoice in someone else's stumble when it happens. And you know what? That's so important because God is the righteous judge. Yeah. He and oh, because he is the righteous one. He's the only one that can see everything at the same time. Past, present, future. He can see all the possibilities, all the outcomes of our choices, all the things that we've done in the past. He sees it all. And so mm. why he's the only one qualified to exact vengeance. He's the only one. Because when he allows that to occur, then the innocent are protected. Mm. When we exact vengeance, we hurt the innocent. <sighs> we need to be hurt. And so now you create a big mess that didn't need to be. Vertical before horizontal. I say it all the time. It's all about having a vertical relationship first because your vertical relationship, if you start seeing things broken around you, stuff is a mess, you, you must first check and be like, well, how's my relationship with God right now? Because usually in my life, when you start off your day with prayer, and before you start your day and all that stuff, like... Even though, not to say your day is going to go smooth, but it's kind of like you do navigate differently. You know, yes. if you get angry, you might apologize quicker because yeah. you, you were connected before you went out that day, you know, yeah. and stay connected vertically before, before you try to navigate horizontal because that's, that's, the, that's, I mean, it's just like that connection connection and go you know get connected and go i mean we can plug our we got our phones and when it dies we know what you know to plug it up we know we have to have a recharge so we got to stay charged up remember unforgiveness is like drinking a poison but expecting someone else to die remember that don't harbor unforgiveness you know That's don't right. don't harbor it because it's not affecting no one but you